Angola is a country in southwestern Africa, boasting vast amounts of natural resources such as agricultural products, fish, minerals, and oil, Angola has unfortunately been unable to successfully exploit its bounty because of the civil war that lasted for 26 years, from 1975 until 2002. Angola was a colony of Portugal until 1975. When the Portuguese decided to give up their colonies, the country devolved into civil war, helped on both sides by the Cold War powers, thus making it into a proxy war. A proxy war occurs when two or more countries fight through another country's war, lending support to one side or another, giving them money, weapons, or even joining in the fray themselves, like what the Americans did in Vietnam or Korea. Angola is no different. The communist forces supported by the MPLA, or the Popular Movement for the Liberation of Angola, which was formed in 1956, and the Democratic Forces forces supported UNITA, or the National Union for the Total Independence of Angola, which was formed in 1966. Before UNITA even formed, there was another group that opposed the MPLA, the FNLA, or the National Front of the Liberation of Angola. They were also supported by the US and its allies, and formed the same year as the MPLA. After the Portuguese left, the country was already pretty poised for civil war. Both sides were vying for supremacy even before the country was independent. For brevity's sake, I won't get too deep in the intricacies of the personal, ethnic, and political reasons for the foundings of these parties, but all the parties wanted to be free of the exploitation that was happening under the Portuguese regime during the 1940s and 50s. The Portuguese responded by exiling all the leaders. In the early days, one of the major points of contention was race. The MPLA was mainly Kipundu-speaking people who were from the northern part of the country, as well as mixed-race people, known as the Mestizos. The FNLA were mainly Kikongo-speaking people from the northwest, near the Congo, as the name suggests. Later, when UNITA was formed, they were favored by the Uvumbundo people and the Lunda Chokwe people in the south. Although they did work together during the War of Independence, the racist attitudes, coupled with their differing political opinions, fueled the fire for a civil war after the Portuguese regime collapsed. Now, the Russians began to fund the MPLA PLA under the recommendation of the Portuguese Communist Party, whereas the Americans began to help the FNLA with UNITA not getting any funding because they were still quite weak militarily and generally tried to stay out of it. Cuban Zaire joined the fray with Cuba on the MPLA side and Zaire for the FNLA. UNITA started fighting again in around 1975 when some of its troops were allegedly massacred, thus the US began to fund them. As you can see, many countries began to get involved in the battles within the Angolan Civil War. But why? What makes them so attractive? Well, political scientist Frederick Pearson found six reasons for why proxy wars are interesting for other parties. First off, to expand the territorial influence. Two, for protection of social groups. Three, for economic interests. Four, for ideological interests. Five, for diplomatic and military interests. And six, for regional power balance. Once one of those criteria have been met, the nation in question must figure out whether or not there's a high probability of success and or a high probability of the escalation of the conflict. With Angola, we can see many of these motivations for why the countries that got involved got involved. The US and the USSR, it was both ideological as well as for expanding their sphere of influence. Whereas the regional powers of South Africa and Zaire, it was more economic, but also for the regional power balance. Zaireans were also supporting the Congolese population in supporting the FNLA. And for all the countries involved, there was a lot of economic interest due to Angola's vast resource wealth. However, proxy wars don't have to use non-state actors like they did in Angola. You can use another state to do your bidding for you, and vice versa. What the Soviets did, instead of giving military advisors to Angola directly, they decided to have Cuba send its military advisors and them answering to the Kremlin, which is quite an ingenious strategy. To be fair, the Americans did a similar covert operation with the Zaireans, but it wasn't as successful. With Angola, the types of assistance varied greatly, with the US and the USSR being more indirect in their support, giving money and such, whereas the South Africans and Zaireans had feet on the ground and were active militarily. Cuba said its military advisors helped the MPLA in battle. China, despite being communist, fought against the Soviet Union by helping UNITA. The Chinese and Russians weren't really getting along, for a whole host of issues that's worth another video in and of itself. By the 1980s, the Cold War was beginning to come to an end, and the Soviets and the Americans wanted to have some sort of solution with Angola. Negotiations began in May of 1988 between UNITA and the MPLA, but by August, the fighting had began again. This continued off and on again until 2002, when the MPLA won, after Jonas Savimbi was killed by the MPLA. Angola is still rebuilding after all the violence that it suffered since its independence. The Angolan Civil War gives us insight into what makes proxy war so appealing for outside forces. Angola had an ideological conflict as well as vast amounts of natural resources and oil that made countries like the US and USSR help it to fight their battles. After all that violence, we're going to go someplace quiet. Next time, we're going to look at Antigua and Barbuda and the Organization of American States. Until next time.